Yeah. Awesome. So yeah, hey, as folks as folks come in, besides for Alice, I'd love for everybody to be muted. Um, and we are so excited to kick off our Scudic Bay Knit Along with the Cashmere Goat here on Zoom. We are super excited to have um, Alice here with us. Um, Alice Dunsmith, you are the designer of the Scudic Bay cardigan. So we are super fortunate to have you here. Um, it's a pleasure to be here. I'm thrilled to have everybody knitting the design and excited to answer questions. And um, I think Iris and I were talking um, at the start that maybe we'll just give a quick little overview. Did everybody watch the video that Iris did on the design? Yay! I see some nods, and um, maybe just one thing. I can't is see that... everyone's face, unfortunately, but um, I see a couple of nods. So the design, actually, I really wanted it to be size inclusive. And when I was designing, I like to design what I like to knit, also, um, and I like to go over the bumps that annoy me and not have those in a design if I can avoid it. So this was my first cardigan design and I'm gonna stand up. It is 90 plus degrees here. So I'm just gonna wear this for a couple of minutes. But um, so just so you can sort of see, the design, as you know, starts at the bottom and goes all the way around and you work it straight up until the area here where you actually are going to do the decreases in mid body shaping. And a lot of people have asked questions about that. Um, and what one of the things that I decided to do is to open up this V. By doing the mid-body shaping here, not only does it kind of bring it in, but it also opens up the V for you. So it's pretty easy. So it's like a really good sweater if you're just starting in on cardigan knitting, it's very accessible. And then I see in the back, you're actually going to go ahead and knit it up and then put them on the stitches on hold and then work the right and left fronts and then put those stitches on hold and do a three needle bind off. So like a couple of things about three needle bind off, if you look up three needle bind off, usually it says put the right sides together. But on this design, I purposely say put the wrong sides together because I wanted that detail to be part of the design. So you can see here. After that, you can pick up the sleeves and knit down in the round. Um, and then you pick up a lot of stitches around the front band and it's got this right twist, which is really not hard. Um, but if it is tricky for you, there's a video that I know Iris has included in the email. So that's easily accessible. And I think I have a couple uh, floating out there as well. Um, other part that I wanted to mention about the construction of this is that if you can see the design, I tried to make it so that this part of the design is actually at our natural waist. Now I say at our natural waist because if I went through menopause, I don't really have my natural waist so much anymore, but I like to have the illusion of that. Um, so that actually is part of what I really worked on to make sure it was size inclusive so that it worked for everybody. That being said, um, some people have longer torsos. So you might want to work a little bit more on the inches before you get to that mid-body shaping. So a few people have asked me if I want to shorten it, if I want to lengthen it, that's where you do it before you do the mid-body shaping. Um, so that is the case there. On the three-quarter length sleeves, they're a little bit fuller. Um, then on the um, long sleeve, the long sleeve has a little bit more taper. People have asked, I like the fuller sleeve. Could I still do the long sleeve with the fuller sleeve? You can, you might need a little bit more yarn with any modification that you make. So just to kind of keep that in mind as you're knitting along. Um, and I think those are the major points that I would quickly make about the cardigan design. And I may have talked too fast or left something out, um, but feel free to if let me know. <laughs> yeah, if folks wanna, I'm gonna watch the chat during this part. And, um, and then maybe after we have a little bit more from Alice, we might just open it up. But if you have questions that come up, feel free to drop them in the chat. Um, and Alice was mentioning, 
our um, Scudic Bay Knit Along um, uh, YouTube playlist. Sorry, I was like, what? YouTube playlist. And so I, <laughs> as I come across um, tutorials, I've added Alice's tutorials. That's also where you'll find the recordings for the Zooms each week. Actually, maybe I should spotlight myself. I think I can be side by side with Alice. Oh, that's fun. Um, there you go. So yeah, Yay, every, like every time <laughs> we have um, the Zoom recording, I'll drop them into that YouTube playlist, um, usually by the next day or so. And yeah, so that's full of some good resources. And um, Alice and I had a chance to chat. Oh, sorry, go ahead. I remembered one thing that I forgot to mention, which was about stitch markers. And I actually just did a post today about that. So um, a few people have mentioned like, what am I doing? Because as you can see, you've got this sort of horizontal design here, but then when we hit this point, there becomes this vertical design. And so I put stitch markers in between each of the sections and dividers, so to speak, so that you can then go ahead and make sure that you know where you're at. Once the pattern is established and you can be like, oh, okay, I get it. She's doing that moss and then she's doing the double moss and there's like the border in between them. If you get comfortable you can take out the markers. If you find it's just easier to kind of watch TV or have a conversation with the markers and leave them. It's no right or wrong. The only thing I would recommend is to keep those side markers in because those are going to be most helpful for you later on. So that's the one point I know I forgot to mention. That's awesome. And I actually was working today, this morning on the email, the Scudic Bay emails come out Fridays. And so I was starting to draft this week's. And I did take a photograph of kind of a close up of those underarm decreases that you were just talking about, Alice, and that I talked about in the video. Um, so that you can just kind of get a visual on that. And you will notice if you look at the picture, they're not exactly the same. And that's just that's how it goes. You're doing a slip slip knit on one side and a slip slip purl on the other side. And guess what? It's in your underarm. So I think um, hopefully nobody's going to be putting their nose under there and critiquing your lack of matchy matchness at that point in your sweater. No, no, no. We should not be having any criticism ever of our knitting. It's all art. <laughs> Um, so I, when Alice, you were with us in the store on Sunday and it was super great because folks were, um, swatching, folks were showing you their swatches. Um, and you know, the, the, the question about swatching sort of came up a few times in our conversation and it seems like a lot of folks are already into the knitting. Um, but I didn't know if you wanted to speak to the gauge swatch issue at all. Yeah, so so swatching is, I'm sure if anyone has made a sweater before, really important because if you want the sweater to fit, you want to make sure that you're getting gauge. And everybody's gauge is a little bit different. So for my design, I got gauge on size eights and size nine bills. Not everybody is necessarily going to get gauge on size eight or size nine. A lot of times I find if I'm working with different needle types, I get a different gauge. Um, you know, some gauges are a little bit tighter than others with different needles. So you definitely want to go ahead and check your gauge. You want to knit the gauge flat. Um, I would start with the stockinette. And, you know, when I say gauge, I'm thinking of a four by four inch gauge, not just a tiny little gauge. Because even if you're off by one or two stitches, depending on what size you're making, that could actually be a couple of inches difference, right? So if you have too many stitches within what you're supposed to have for your four inch gauge, your sweater is potentially gonna to be too small. If you have too few, then your sweater is gonna to be too big. Um, so it really is important to do that. The other thing about this sweater that, you know, people will send it, oh gosh, I noticed that the texture, it kind of pulls up there's a lot of texture going on in this. So I really say to everyone, you know, make sure that you're thinking about your fabric when it's completely blocked, when you're doing your measurements. The reason that's important is that this part 
is naturally going to rise up. So before you put this band, band on, it is going to look like one side is shorter than the back maybe. It all comes out in the end with blocking. You have to block. <laughs> but um, but checking your gauge is really important. So a few people have said, well, you know, I'm close to gauge on everything, except I'm a little bit off on the double moss or I'm a little bit off on the moss. As long as you're pretty close with everything, I definitely would say if you're in, you know, close, 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 close off on double moss, I would say go with what you're getting with your stock net. But there are lots of reasons why you swatch too. You want to get into the rhythm of what that moss stitch is that I've put in the pattern, what the double moss is, because if we're not used to those stitches, we tend to go tighter as well. So I just think um, there's lots of reasons to swatch, but the main one is we want your sweater to fit. I want your sweater to fit. I want you to be happy. So, great. So we've got a couple questions in the chat and I'm going to share them. Um, so the first one comes from Lori and Lori did two swatches. Awesome. And it looks like Lori needs to use the one size larger needle to get okay. gauge and is asking, is there anything she needs to think about when doing this? And I say, if you're, if your gauge swatch is coming gauge, out, you're, you're good. And, and because, you know, knitters are unique, we all have our different tensions, just different needle uh, materials, it all makes a difference. So I think you should be good to go um, with that, Lori. The right or wrong thinking, it's all good. All Looks good, different. it's all all about your fabric and um, and your your individual knitting. So here's another great one about gauge and swatching from Priscilla. How do you know what size to block your gauge swatch? When you have a sweater, you have the size to block to, but if you're swatching, I'm not sure how to block it. Do you want to answer that one, Alice? Sure. So how I tend to block my swatches is I put them in cool to lukewarm water, whatever I plan forevermore to wash my sweater in or swatch in that is what i use so i tend to be a little bit of a wimp and i go with cooler water than warm water that's just my style and i use a sweater soap and i let it soak for 15 minutes i don't agitate it a lot because you don't want to play with the fabric so much so that it gets filthy on you um and then i lay it flat i actually have blocking mats that i use um which um, I have a table, which, you know, you, if you don't have a table, you can put it on a floor. Um, the play mats actually from Lowe's or Home Depot will work fine if you don't have blocking mats and they're fairly inexpensive. I find sometimes putting on a towel actually is not quite as effective because it doesn't dry quite well. Um, and then I pin it. And then the fabric kind of naturally sets. And, you know, you don't want to pull too much one way or the other, but just let it flat and you know you know make it spread just the way you envision wearing it then use your swatch gauge to check the measurements and i i would also so um we've talked about uh, this on other zooms too uh i've got yoga mats in my house i don't have blocking mats Perfect. and a yoga mat is another really it's something a lot of folks have around and and it's it's awesome i'll lay out my yoga mat i'll lay out my whatever i'm blocking and i'll put a fan on when it's really humid like it is here today but i don't pin i i just sort of like pat it down and kind of like form it into the shape and i think you know yeah exactly as you said i'm not squishing or pushing or anything i'm just kind of trying to like lay it flat and trying to let it sort of tell me how it wants to be if that makes it's a little nebulous imagine but. it's just out in the woods and hanging out by the lake just let it sit it might want to be in the lake if it was hot like today but yeah um uh -huh. okay <laughs> 100, yeah, hundred percent. So, okay, couple more questions. Therese has a really great question, and this gets to gauge as well. So, Alice, Therese is asking about the instruction at the bottom of page five that continues to page six, where, and I have it right in front of me. Um, so it's it's in the mid body shaping section, and so it's talking about mid body shaping to open for the V neck neckline will require, and then it's all the numbers in parentheses of blocked depth. So think about your blocked swatch in determining your desired length. And remember that the top edge of the lower body is designed to sit at just your natural waist. So I yes. bet you know just what we're talking about. 
I do know just what you're talking about. So that gets back to that point that I sort of mentioned that as you're going along, you may notice that it's rising up a little bit. So my point on that is to just double check that you're thinking about what is my blocked swatch same for all the different textures as well as the docinette to make sure that you're knitting enough, that you're not going too short on your, um, on your uh, pattern there. Sorry. So when I read this, how I thought about it, and correct me if this was wrong thinking, sure, but sure. I looked at my swatch in my stockinette section, and yep. I looked at the number of rows involved with shaping that v-neck. So for my size, it was like a total of four, t four times I was repeating. Um, yep. So eight rows. Right. Right. I think. Yep. And so I, I looked at my swatch and I um, looked at what eight rows looked like. And then I looked back at my size when it gives the mid body math. shaping for the, huh? And you did I looked math. back. I did math. <laughs> and it was pretty easy math because I was like, it was all right. Easy. Right. This this V neck is asking me to I'm have. I'm trying not to scare you off, yours, but you are spot on with what I was thinking. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yes. So I was like, okay, an inch and a half is what this is going to take, and how close am I with my eight rows to that inch and a half? Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, Therese, maybe just like drop it in the comments if that helps clear that up for you. And we'll move on to the next question. Um, so Mona, we've already talked about swatching and swatching the different patterns. The one to pay attention to is your stockinette. And then which is more important, row gauge or stitch gauge? We kind of talked about row gauge just in the last question, but what do you think about that question? So I like both stitch and row gauge. Um, I don't like to have to choose one over the other, especially for this particular pattern, um, is where I would leave that statement. <laughs> gotcha. Um, yeah. I mean, I I think mostly I will say for me stitches personally, the stitches, right? But there are times in certain patterns where that row, like what we were just talking about, becomes important. Exactly. Exactly. And, so, and likewise, no gauge is much horizontal knit. That would be super duper important. Um, mm -hmm. But it's it's still good to be as close as you can get. And row gauges is, is what I was about to say is row gauge is easier to adapt if you're a little bit off, right? Because you could knit a little bit longer or shorter. You just have to be aware of it for sure. Exactly. Um, exactly. Okay, so next question is from Pat. Pat Holloway, um, after you finish doing the three needle bind off for the back and sides, the pattern says to block the sweater at this part. Is this a must and does it make a difference for picking up the stitches for the rib band? Great question, Pat. That is an excellent question. Thank you. Um, should I tell the truth? <laughs> um, I do think that it actually is easier um, to pick up those stitches if you do block it. So I would say yes. When So because I actually tend to not knit my sweater once before I publish it, I tend to knit it a few times. I will confess, however, that on the first draft of the design, I did not block it. Subsequent sweaters that I did make, I did block in between. And I think it really does make it much easier to see where am I picking up those stitches, right? Because I don't know about you guys, but it always takes me a try or two before I get all of the stitches just how I want them around the sleeve or around the button band so that they're even. Um, so I would say yes, I would block it if you're asking my personal opinion. And also, this is a spoiler for Friday's email. I had the presence of mind to way back when I was knitting the sweater in the spring to take a picture of my funny looking sweater laid out flat when I had uh, I had my left front I think on holders I knit up the back and I had like a partial front and so it's this very strange shape and I thought it was important to show that very strange shape in the flat yeah. so you could really see because it just seemed like and I looked at it, I was like geesh this like 
how is this all going to work? And then it all worked and came it's a very together. Different it's a very different construction. Actually, my tech editor, Annie, um, who I love to the ends of the earth, um, when we were discussing it and we were talking about, you know, how I wanted it to go across all sizes. And she was like, I don't think I've ever seen a cardigan designed quite like this. And she goes, it's actually kind of fun. And I said, yeah, it's, I don't think it's out there yet, but here it is. So um, hopefully you enjoy it. Well, and that um, actually leads into our next qu question from Kristen, which is really kind of a cool, like all the stars are aligning in our questions feeding into each other. I'm wondering if Alice could speak to the purpose of the back increases or decreases. Um, increasing seems uncommon here. So yeah, let's hear about it. Yeah, so actually, so that is to accommodate some people's upper backs are going to be a little bit wider, some people are a little bit thinner. So um, I actually made one um, that I modified. It's on the Ravelry page, but um, my son's girlfriend actually is very tall and very petite. So I had to do a couple of modifications to actually make sure that it. Um, so some people, you know, have shorter torsos that are more narrow so that's why it either increases or decreases as you can see it's got a little bit of a drop shoulder too so that actually is part of the other reason so it fits nicely across all sizes great question awesome Does that answer it i see a nod good <laughs> great um yeah, I'm trying to think of some of the other things that came up at our Zoom kickoff. I don't know, um, would you maybe share a little bit about your path to designing? Because I think that was something folks were curious about when we met on Sunday. Yeah, yeah that, that actually is a pretty fun, very cashmere goat focused story, actually. So um, my previous uh, career path, I actually am a nurse um, and I've done sort of poster child for what you can do with your nursing degree. In the past prior 18 years, I was actually working in primary care. And when the pandemic hit, um, nobody was coming into primary care and they were looking to furlough people. And I looked at my colleagues and I said, okay, they are either still have kids that are still in school or they're single parents. Our kids are out of college and my granddaughter, who was a year at the time, um, daycare shut down and was not available. So we weighed everything and I stayed home full time, took the furlough and um, was home caring full time for, with my, for my granddaughter, who is now five. Um, and I thought I am going to lose my ever living mind if I don't do something. I'm too young to not be doing my career or doing something that uses my brain. And so I was thinking about maybe I'll teach knitting. You know, there's a lot of stress out there. Maybe I could do it in the home. And I went up to Cashmere Goat and I saw Kristen and Rachel Coleman, who some of you may know, um, worked at the shop. And I was chatting with them and I said, yeah, so I'm thinking about doing this. And so Kristen said, I said, I thought maybe I'd make a couple of hats and put those on consignment. What do you think? And Kristen said, sure, but you can't knit somebody else's hats. You need to design your own. And I went back. We were staying in Maine overnight. And I thought to myself, oh, gosh, I really had never thought about that. And so I thought about it some more. And I said, gosh, I've been knitting since I was seven. I mean, I guess I could do that. And that might actually be kind of fun. And so I came up with four hat patterns and designed them. And I walked in and Kristen said, I love them. I'll take five of each. And then, you know, I had been toying with this idea and Kristen and Rachel both looked at me and said, go for it. Um, start birch tree nets. And that's how this all came to be. So, and I haven't stopped since. Um, before when I was working as a nurse, I actually helped out at my local yarn shop. And actually Annie, who is now my tech editor and does grading for me, um, we taught together. So Annie and I had this wonderful friendship for years and it just has been such a delight to continue to work with Annie um, now in a different way, but um, we just have a lot of laughs, a lot of fun and um, it's, it's a joy to put patterns together and um, she and I go back and forth and I never mind that there are 200 corrections on the first draft. 
<laughs> That's amazing. That's such a good, I, mean, I love the story. And um, I want to make sure that you hear that Bev gave you a big thank you for serving as a nurse. Oh, please. Yes. I, I have loved my career as a nurse and um, there are a lot of transferable skills I have found in, in my new pathway with teaching and with designing. So it's been, it's been, it's really a joy. And I also, I was um, chatting with Allison, asking her a little bit about the teaching that she does. And, and she, I think also in the same way that nurses are service um, folks, you're teaching knitting seems to serve some very high powered folks in the Boston area who probably really, really need something to do with their hands and not their brains quite as much. Yeah. Well, for all of us. Right. And I think, I think that, you know, the gift I had, you know, my mom was my first teacher and I had like these wonderful people in my life, my aunt and my godmother both knit. And so I really learned a lot of the foundation when I was young, but, you know, kind of put it aside, tried to make my first sweater in high school, I think, and got frustrated and put it away and didn't deal with anything until I was working in the corner care unit in Boston. And I had this little baby, you know, my daughter, who's now all grown up and a mom. And, and I thought, oh my gosh, I need some kind of balance because this is a lot, you know, critical care was in the end, maybe not where I was best served. I'm really grateful for the experience, but primary care was more my space that I was more about the holistic approach. Um, but when I was learning how to really dive into knitting, I had this instructor um, locally who, you know, I would go in and say, well, I'd like to try this. And she said, well, sure you can. And so she challenged me, you know, make it, make an Irish knit, make an Antasha, make, you know, Fair Isle, don't be afraid to do a loopy, you know, knit or a cardigan or a sweater or whatever, you know, so I just learned by doing and I find that that's how I teach, you know, I like to know what do people want to make and most of my patterns are actually inspired by um, things that some of my students have said that they would like to learn how to do. This sweater actually was a, a shrug originally um, that I, well, not a, it, my shrug is a different design, but one of my students said, I really like that, but could you make it a cardigan design? Because I don't wear shrugs. And so that's how this happened. Um, so anyway, that's a little bit of background. Thank you. Thanks so much for sharing that with us. Um, you know, our, the way that we find our ways to knitting and making things with our hands, as well as the way we find our career and vocations um, and how that can really ebb and flow. It's always really, I find it inspiring to hear about folks who transition um, from different types of work. Um, it's and it's awesome. Yeah, yeah, it's a gift. I say, don't hesitate, jump. I love it. Um, I have a great question. Speaking of, as we were about like a little bit of fear, this is from Lucy. And um, this is a similar question that I had actually choosing a size to make frightened Lucy. She's never knit a sweater with negative ease before this one and is afraid it won't fit when she's finished. And I honestly, I had the same thought. I was like, I've never knit negative ease. I would never knit anything that is exactly my bust. What is, how could this possibly work? Um, so speak a little bit about that. Yeah. Yeah. So, so when you think about it, you know, how it fits when you sort of measure and, and a lot of times people talk about bust, right? But that might not be the measure, right? So what is, I sort of coach people, you know, think about what is the measure for you that seems like it's the larger part that you want to have fit across. And then, you know, from there, you know, subtract two or go with that, you know, original number that you've got. Um, this part, the V actually opens up. So that gives you that, that it ease. Um, but if you were, I mean, you could make it bigger, but I think it might be a little bit drapier, right? It might be a little bit too, like you might have your drop sleeves down here instead of where 
you know, you kind of want it to just sort of fit and be on your shoulders. So I completely understand the nervousness. Um, and when I was designing this, I was like, wow, I'm really knitting this really long piece. And um, if this kind of turns out to not work out, <laughs> I'm ripping a lot. <laughs> um, but, you know, I would say trust the pattern um, and, um, you know, definitely take that measurement that you think is the largest and, and trust and go with the zero to two. Um, I think one thing that I remember doing was I did take my long barber cord before I slipped off for my split off for the underarms and I, yeah. I laid it all out and I was like, wow, this looks really big. And then I was like, oh, okay. So, and so, and that was even before, you know, the, the V shaping was happening, but I kind of, I actually had a little help in the mirror, but I. I kind of draped it around my body as it would be also remembering that it would have the um, the cable at the front, but just to give me a little bit of reassurance that I was not wildly off track or it was way too, way too, you know, out here or something like that. So that, Absolutely. yeah. And the other thing is, you know, a couple of people have said to me, well, what if at the end I'm really not, you know, comfortable and I really want it to be a little bit more. A few people have said, you know, could I add an extra little, you know, right twist and a little bit, make it a little bit deeper? You could. So I think, you know, if that gives you a little bit of reassurance with following the directions of zero to negative two, um, I'm happy to offer that up. <laughs> I hope that helps, Lucy. Um, let's see. Maybe we should... Um like unspotlight us because we've talked a lot and it's been awesome. And then maybe we could uh, have folks like raise hands. Again, we are kind of a larger group tonight. Um, raise a hand and then we could, you know, give you some space to, uh, to, to share a thought or maybe show us, show us what you're working on, tell us about your yarn, that kind of thing. I would love to see everything. Okay, I'm taking off the spotlights, taking off the spotlights. And yeah, so let's see, anybody feel like raising a hand and um, you can like raise your physical hand. I've got, I think I've got everybody on the screen now. Um, maybe everybody's shy. Oh, Pat, you wanna unmute? Hello everybody. I um, started ahead of time as we were given permission to do. The, the yarn that I wanted for mine was not available. So I went to a local yarn shop with my sister-in-law and she picked out a Cascade 220 in this color. It doesn't come across really pretty on the screen, but it's kind of a aqua. Uh, and I mm -hmm. have gotten this far. Beautiful. I just finished putting the, um, doing the three needle bind off. So this is what it'll look like when it's ready to do that. And there's the back. So now I guess I'll soak it this afternoon after we finish and let it dry and see what happens. And then Pat, I'll start we had a we had a question from Bev. What size is your sweater? Is the sweater that you're holding up? It's, uh, I'm doing the, um, <clears throat> in the brackets, the third number in. So it's kind of the second medium. So, um, and I need to try this on my sister-in-law before I block it to make sure that this is going to work for her. But you is that the, so you the second one in is like the 36 and a quarter, I think. Uh, I'm the third. Second so the one 40? in from, oh, the 40. The 40, okay. yes, yeah. the 40. So if this were to be on me, I guess. Beautiful. That far enough. Beautiful. So I, th I think she's going to love it. And for myself, go ahead. Oh, for myself, I was waiting for fleece to come back in for when I 
chose chose the fossil color and it, it they it was out so i am working now on my swatch so it's softer than i expected it's really nice so uh, now that i'm waiting for this one to block i can start my swatch i you know have to keep those hands busy so that's that's next the second one that's all excellent love it alice is knitting the same she's knitting on the same fossil as you pat yeah and um kristen we have Kristen's block swatch in the shop yeah, and she gorgeous. chose that beautiful green and it yes. just feels so good. And there's really just the pretty. sweetest little halo on it. Oh, love it. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you for sharing. Anybody else? Uh, let's see, Linda, it looks like Linda. Yes, hi, so, Linda. hi. Um, I jump started too because I wanted to be able to wear mine when I come to Maine next week. Well, I'm probably not going to make it, but um, it's being blocked right now. Um, the, not not the whole thing, the pre-blocking before I put the um, rib on the front. But I'm making mine, this is one of my swatches, out of the uh, Noro yarn that I got from cashmere goat and I'm pretty excited about it I was nervous about the size too um, because I don't want anything to touch me <laughs> um, but I did you know I went with the negative ease just like maybe just a little bit more but um, I love the way it's turning out great that's beautiful all right I think I saw was it Mary Ellen Martola. So hi there. I'm um well you're all gonna be jealous. It's like about 70 degrees here and it's dry and sunny. So <sighs> I'm, I'm in Salt Lake City. <laughs> um but I so I've just um started, you know, I'm just kind of done the beginning stitches and now doing that um four rows of knit and purl. But I just wanted to say I love this yarn. It's on it's called On the Round, and this color is Robin's Egg, and it's just, um, it's a plush DK, and it's just so nice to work with. So Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. We, we love that yarn so much, and um, as you know, that's what I used for mine. Um, it just feels so good in your hand. It's so squishy. Uh, I see Mona, you've got your hand raised. Welcome. If you'd like to unmute. Hello, everyone. Um, I don't know where everyone's from, but I'm from Colorado. Um, so I'm very excited about joining this group um, for a knit along. Um, I have like a couple sweaters. I've never finished one, so um, but I like. I like the idea of this one. Actually, the sweater I have on my needles right now is a raglan, and I use the double moss throughout the whole entire thing. So I really like this combination of the different stitches. So thank you, Alice. Um, mm -hmm. And here's my swatch. And I use the fleece uh, number three um, color. Um, and I love the fact I've never, I've heard that blue face luster is really soft and it's very nice. So um, I'm very excited about doing that. So um, I'll have to go back. I missed the first part of the the group. I didn't, I couldn't find the password, which I finally did for the Zoom. <laughs> um, so um, I'll have to listen to it again when you were talking more about the gauge and all of that. So um, thank you very much. Good luck to everyone who's already started. Um, that's really a great idea. Sometime I'll do that. So thank you. Awesome. Thanks so much, um, Mona, for joining us. And tonight we sort of, because we have such a large group, we didn't do, you know, introductions and where we're all from, but that might be something that we do um, in, in, in the future. Let's see. It looks like I've got two hands. The first one that I saw pop up was from Lucy. Lucy, you want to unmute?
have, let's see, you're still muted. Um, I still can't hear you, Lucy. There we go. There we go. I'm using plush DK, always a bridesmaid. Ah. And I just started it this morning because again, I hesitated on choosing the size, but I am going with the negative ease and just hoping that it's gonna that it's gonna Zero work or out. <laughs> Pardon me? Zero or negative ease, either one. I still I didn't hear you. I'm sorry. Oh, sorry. I said zero or oh, negative. Fine. Negative. Um, my full chest was um forty five. So I did. I'm doing. I'm doing. Oh, I'm doing. I'm doing forty three point five. Sounds good. And hoping it's going to work. I don't, I just don't, don't yeah. like, I don't like anything really that is tightly across my chest. It's I hear that. But, I, I hear that and I respect it. Actually, um, so Annie, my tech editor, um, does a lot of um, size modifications for people too. Um, and um, we talked a lot about sizing for different um, shapes and, you know, make that I really felt strongly I wanted to look good on everyone. So I am hopeful that you'll be very happy with the end design. Yeah, so am I. I'm giving, I'm giving it a try and I have like a lot of time. It's going to rain here tomorrow, so I'll have a lot of knitting time, which will be great. Oh. Awesome. And I just love the design. It's just so neat. Thank you. It's so neat. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks, Lucy. Um, I think Kristen, you had your hand up. Do you want to unmute? Sure. I'm using um Malabrico's Arroyo um in the immortal colorway. And it's I've cute. got the body finished. And I've been working on the back. It's beautiful. I really, yeah, I really like the way the colors are working up in the pattern. I wasn't <sighs> sure how that was going to come out. And um, yeah, it's it's nice and dense. It's not too airy. So I like it. Good. I like it. Oh, very Yay. pretty. Thank you for posting, too. Oh, you're welcome. Yay. Hey. Love that. Yes, yeah, so Alice and I were talking a little bit about if you're on Ravelry and you can post your project, I talk a little bit about this in the email as well and how to do it. It really is helpful for designers. Um, so, so yeah, think about that. Let's see. Okay, next up, I think I had Mona. Did you have another question? Do you want to unmute? I kind of ask a lot of questions. Um, because, and especially since I haven't started, I meant to ask this when I was on before. Um, so on page two, it talks about the size information finished um, and the negative ease. So the size, the measurements that, that are there on inches is the, across the bust. So um, it may be across the bust, it may be across whatever the, larger size um, of your body is that you would want to measure. Oh, okay. And that takes into account a zero to two inch negative ease? Yes. Yes, okay. Okay, thank you. Great. Yes. Uh, let's see, next up, I think we have Kim would like to ask a question. Um, let's see. Hello. Hi, Kim. I'm, I'm the only Kim. <laughs> Kim. And hi, Linda. How are you? I haven't seen you since the cruise. Nice to see you're going back up to Maine. Um, I'm down in southern Maine, and it's like 90 
down here and humid. So I'm dying. Um, <laughs> I Just a quick that. interruption. I got the exact yarn to make your sweater that in my birthday was a couple of weeks ago. That's what my mother gave me for my birthday. Oh, awesome. Really, it's my um, next project. I, I set my next, um, I had bought the new finished knitting pattern book um, that just came out a few months ago. And on our, our schooner cruise with Kristen and crew, um, I had been knitting that and I was able to finish it while we were on the cruise and, and I loved it. So I started my next one and I decided to set it down because I love this pattern so much, Alice. This is gorgeous. Um, I'm using vintage, Barocco vintage DK and it's so soft. It's, it's wonderful. Um, a question for you. I'm just now, can you see? Oh, well, maybe I'll see. Great. It's great lighting, actually, right there. Yeah, that's it is. amazing. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Set back a little bit. There we bit. go. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. So I'm doing the setup row. Is the setup row also row one? Um, essentially, yes, because okay. you're putting your stitch markers in, but then you want to make sure that you go to row two. Exactly. Yes. That's what I, I was like. I don't knit setup row and then row one. I knit right. Correct. Okay. Correct. Okay. Correct. Awesome. Um, we went back. I went back and forth about how to best um, describe that, but that's how I landed. <laughs> that's perfect. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, Kim. Um, next up is my friend Barbarina. Yay! Hi there. I'm in Montpelier, Vermont. Um, I'm also knitting in Malabrigo's Arroyo, also in the Immortal colorway. Um, and I did two gauge swatches. I didn't come anywhere near the gauge. Um, well, it's a sport weight yarn, right? Right. But I found that when I, I actually, when my third swatch was able to achieve gauge, but when I washed and blocked it, it just stretched like taffy. And I, I just felt like I wasn't going to like the fabric when it was finished. So I'm knitting it at quite a smaller gauge. I think it looks nice. Um, but I'm guessing I'll just have to really focus on lengthening it because it's much more compact. Mm-hmm. But you were able to get gauge. Yeah, I mean, I was able to get gauge on very big needles, but the fabric was so loosey goosey. And because it's a machine washable, I was afraid it would just hang. So I made the decision yeah. to go with a more dense gauge and I'll, I'm just doing a much bigger size, but I'm realizing I wasn't as scrupulous about row gauge. So I might want to pull back and just make sections taller. Or you could also like lengthen that mid body section. Um, right. Yep. Right. Mm -hmm. Is that nice? Either way would be fine. But yes, it, that is another way to go up a larger size. Yeah. Yay. Hey. Uh, looks like Margie Cole has a question. Hi, Margie. Welcome. Oh, you're a little muted still. Um, I just wanted to show you my on the round plush DK in the harvest color, which I just love. Beautiful. And this is a gift for my daughter who actually lives in Rockland. I'm in Richmond, Virginia. So I'm hoping we can do this long distance. <laughs> nice. Love it. Absolutely usually, we can. I come to Maine in November. So we usually stop into the shop then. And I know she goes in there regularly, but she's in grad school now, so not much knitting is going on. But this is a lovely pattern, and I'm really enjoying it. And I did, <laughs> like, I did two gauge swatches, and I ended up going up quite a bit for the for the um, twist stitch, and I still have to go back. I got the stockinette, like, I knit the whole big thing in nine, on uh, nine needles, and the stockinette was great, and nothing else matched. And I had to go to ten and a half for this twisty pattern, so we're going to have to keep going with the gauge swatches as I go along. Awesome. And I hope that you'll maybe be wearing your sweater when you come in November. Oh, well, this is her sweater. So hopefully oh, she will be wearing it. <laughs> oh, very cool. Yes, we'll bring her, bring her in. I gotcha. Perfect. 
Um, and thank you for ordering this because it's just it's just every bit as pretty as it looks like online. Yeah, very very autumnal, super yes. super beautiful. Beautiful. And let's see, anybody got their hands up? Can we answer all the questions in the chat? I didn't. Oh, hold on. I think I see Therese. Therese, do you want to pop in here with a question? Sorry, it took me a minute to find to find everybody. That's okay. Um, there we go. I um. By the way, Alice, I really like this pattern. It's very fun to knit. I did stop. I was. It didn't take, and it doesn't take long, which is lovely. Um. I stopped because I had that question about what that you've answered it, but the the bottom of page five, I couldn't figure out. Are you talk? What are you? What section are you talking about? So I wanted to make sure that was all clear before I went forward. But um, I've obviously gotten to this point. Um, sorry, the lighting. It's 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 late. I can see great. Yeah, it's, it's great. You're in Spain, so. Um, oh my gosh, so you're we're in Spain. I forgot. <laughs> otherwise, you know, my my salon here would be filled with light because it's about sixty percent windows in in my living room. Um, but anyway, so I'm using um, what am I using? I'm using Holt um, Super Soft oh. Held Double with. Um, Beautiful. A strand of Titicaca, the um, all alpaca. And mm. um, I did, so it's a little, you know, it's a little thicker than probably, that's why I went down um, to get gauge. I didn't use the needle size. I had to play around with it. So, but my row, my row gauge or was like, fine. Yeah. Yeah. And DK so, or like mustard is fine. Yeah, yeah. So it, it fortunately, and it's a very sheepy smell. But it, um, but I love this when it, um, when you block it because it, it becomes beautiful. I mean, it's pretty now, but it's and it's very light, so it's great. But anyway, my question for you is: I really like this pattern, and by the way, I have never used the stitch. You call it RT? Right, the right twist. Yeah. I never used it before. And I started knitting and I'm like going, now what? what? And then I, you know, it was one of those things like when you turn your first heel when you're making socks and they just say, don't think about it. Just do it as it's written. You know, I, <laughs> that was in the back of my mind. And so when I started to do it, it's like, oh, wow. I've never done this before, but this is actually kind of cool. And um, yeah, so that was nice. I mean, cause like right off the bat, you're learning something new, or at least for me, I was learning something new. But my question is when you were talking about how you got into designing and, and the, the, the evolution there, you were talking about this sweater and somebody you knew said, I don't wear, I don't wear shrugs, so can you make a cardigan? So is the shrug that you, is it the pattern for the ocean side or the? Yes. Yes. Okay. Because okay. I had um, designed. Sorry. I had designed ocean side shrug and my student said to me, so I really like that, but I don't wear shrugs. Could you make it a cardigan? And then that got me sort of thinking a little bit more outside the box. Um, and I played around and this is what I came up with. I like the drape of the shrug and the shrug is actually, I mean, it looks familiar now that I've seen this pattern, but it's also very long in the back. So yes. I like actually the look of it. And I was thinking if it knits up as quickly as this, it I'm will knit even quicker. Pardon me? It'll even quicker. quicker. Yeah. So I'm thinking um, this might be a good solution for some um, Christmas presents. So perfect. So thank you. But I really enjoy the pattern. Very easy. Um, 
I quit whatever day I got to that point. It didn't take me very long to knit what I've got. And I quit because there were, there were a couple of other patterns, a couple of other sweaters that I'm knitting. So I stopped to start this one. And when I stopped this one, it's like, okay, I'm going to go back to this other, but I have a funny story. This is, um, Oh God, now I can't remember what the color is, but, um, I had ordered this from Holtz in Denmark and, um, actually they're going to send me some more. I should get it probably tomorrow. A, a different color. Cause it's on the cones, which is really nice. But, um, I got this it came in and it's like god I love this color so I'm finishing this and I'm starting one that I that I've had on the needles you know that I quit like a week ago or whatever and it's like it was a regia um alpaca soft I think is the way what it's called it's almost exactly the same color as these two colors together make so I'm thinking mm -hmm. I guess I like that color I guess I like it. Awesome. But anyway, thank you so much. My pleasure. Awesome. Well, thanks for joining us from Spain. It's pretty fun to have an international member of our CAL here. Um, let's see. So we are coming up on the top of the hour. And I wonder if there's anybody that has a burning question before we wrap it up here in a few minutes. Uh, looks like Barbarina again, hi. Hi, so I just took mine off the needles because I realized I'd, I'd made a mistake and I'm wondering about just making each section taller, but I hadn't, I hadn't really taken into account the borders. So it's, it's about an inch and a half smaller than I am right now. But once I add the borders, am I actually gonna have positive ease? I mean, I'm fine with just starting the whole thing all over again. I realize because I don't yeah, have- I think, Yeah, I think if you actually, so if I'm hearing you correctly, it sounds like when you put it around you, it's kind of like an inch and a half from your center now. Yeah, so it, it will be positive ease. Okay, so I should just start over. Okay. All right, that's fine. Sorry. That's okay. All right, how about, how's any, everybody doing okay out there in, uh, in the Zoom world? Looks like a lot of happy knitters knitting along, which is awesome. And so what I will say is we're going to get this Zoom um, up on YouTube and we will um, also next week, we will have this same, um, same time, same place here in our living rooms or wherever you may be. And Alice said she might be able to pop in again, which is super exciting um, to have this kind of support and engagement from our designer. We're really excited about having you, Alice. Oh, it's been, it's a, it's a joy always. I mean, my, my designing career started with Cashmere Goat with Kristen's little push. <laughs> and what's been so fun for us in the shop with this, and you know, mine is my, my one in Rebel is, is on the dress form in the shop. And you know, people are still, you know, their, their, their eyes are catching on that sweater and they're so, you know, it's so fun to see all, all different folks get interested in this pattern. And I think it has a really nice broad appeal for, um, you know, that kind of, again, when we're picking our knit along sweaters, we're really looking for things that are going to be a wardrobe staple. And I mean, my experience, like I've told you, it's just like, I kept reaching for that sweater all summer long. Cause it was the perfect thing if the you know, a little bit of a cool day or, you know, I've got AC in the shop and, you know, or whatever it is. And it just, it feels so good on your body. Um, and I think a lot of that is the gauge and just sort of that drapey fit. And so, um, yeah. And people just, you know, put on the one that's mine and like, oh, wow, this feels so good. And it's just really wonderful to have so many folks be excited about what you've created. Wow. I'm pitching myself. <laughs> 
it's really been fun. It's really fun. Yeah. So it's, it's a joy to see other people knitting it and enjoying it and um, having a cozy hug to put on, you know, when it's kind of the best of days or maybe not the best of days. It's kind of nice to have a sweater that you can snuggle into. Totally. Um, well, we are going to wrap it up because we're at the top of the hour at six. Thank you all so much for joining us from all the places. And we hope we'll see you next week here on Zoom on Wednesday. And in the meantime, happy knitting on your Scudic. And thank you so much, Alice. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Look forward to seeing everyone's patterns. All right. Bye, everybody. Bye.